Welcome to Rotary and Serving Our Community. Today we're going to take a look at one of the cooperating organizations that Rotary works with in helping to improve lives around the world. This organization is called World Vision and with us today we have a guest, uh, Kim Lorenz from World Vision and also a Rotarian. Kim, welcome. Thank you, happy to be here. Uh, Kim, tell us a little bit about yourself, your personal life. We want to know a little bit about what you do. And I used to own a business I started when I was young, my wife and I, and we sold our companies in the late 90s. Uh, I had joined Rotary in 1980, and uh, after selling the companies, I was too young to retire, so I got were involved with World Vision and Rotary projects and realized there was a, a possibility of working together between the two. I've got uh, three children, seven grandchildren, I'm a pilot, a U.S. Coast Guard captain. I stayed very busy since we sold the companies, but I now spend most of my time with Rotary and World Vision. Sounds good. So what attracted you to Rotary? How did you get involved with Rotary? Uh, we started our company, I mentioned, in the late 70s, and one of my customers kind of drugged me in and said, I think this is a perfect opportunity for you to give something back to the community. And I think most of us in Rotary have that desire to help our communities, and this seemed to be a pretty natural fit. So I jumped in and been there 36 years now. Wow, wow, great. So you joined when you're in your teens. 20s, <laughs> yeah. 20s, good for yeah. you. All right, and World Vision, how did uh, this come about where you got with that organization? Yeah, I was a, uh, I am a major donor to World Vision, and I started doing some fundraising for them as a volunteer in microfinance, uh, mostly to women in Central America and developing countries. And um, they knew I was in Rotary, so the Rotary Foundation actually had a meeting with the president of World Vision. So he called me and he said, we just had this meeting with them and uh, we don't have anybody here that knows anything about Rotary, would you come down and talk to us? So I did and I said I'd look into it and see what we could do and that was 12 years ago and I'm wow. still doing it. Great. So what are the uh, similarities in the partnership potentials? The way that the two organizations work, they sound like they're both humanitarian, but there's yeah. maybe some specifics. No, it's a great question. Uh, most people in Rotary know the six areas of focus that, the, uh, that Rotary is putting their efforts behind, that being water and health, food, economic development, education, peace development. Uh, World Vision has about 47,000 staff wow. in 100 countries. And the correlation where these collaborations work well is when uh, Rotary wants to do a project, often World Vision is there and the Rotarians do not know that. And so that's where we come in and try to collaborate together. We bring a lot of the professional feet on the ground uh, in financial. Uh, most of our projects are some of the largest projects done every year with the Rotary Foundation, but uh, at least half of the money comes from a donor to World Vision. So World Vision is the largest, world's largest privately funded non-government organization, NGO. So where the synergies overlap in these countries, it ju they just uh, provide an opportunity to do some great, very sustainable projects. Got it. So you said that it's in, a, uh, in 100 countries, correct? Um, does this include then some of the developing countries? Mostly all. The, mostly. It's mostly all in developing countries. Okay. Yeah. So where Rotary does big projects, we've done collaborations together in Ethiopia, Kenya, Angola, Ghana, Uganda, Nicaragua, Honduras, uh, all in some of the worst parts of each of these countries. Mm. And you have headquarters, uh, small headquarters, and that you work out of in those areas. I do. Okay. Uh, we do. Uh, in, uh, let's take Uganda as an example. There's a national office in Kampala, and most of the larger Rotary Clubs are in Kampala, but there's 56 Rotary Clubs in Uganda. Mm -hmm. There's 58 small regional World Vision offices, mm -hmm. and they're all staffed by Ugandans. So one of the best parts of our collaborations, Wade, is for me to sit with a local Rotary Club teaching them how to work with World Vision, for me to sit with the World Vision staff doing the same, having them understand there isn't a secret handshake with Rotary <laughs> Clubs, uh, and then have the two get together in the same room, and they went to school together. They grew up together. So we're really pairing local people to do these local projects where they need to be done out in the 
worst parts of these countries. Great. Now in Uganda, what would be some of the specific projects that you would do? The first one we did, if you're familiar with the child soldiers mm -hmm. areas mm -hmm. and the right. Lord's Resistance Army, uh, the LRA caused three million people to be displaced from their homes in northern Uganda. And so uh, our very first project there was still while it was under relief work, still while the LRA was there, we started a project with uh, District 5950 from Minneapolis. And we did a million dollar water, sanitation, and hygiene project. And at the time, that was the largest wash project World Vision had done in Uganda. It's also the largest that Rotary had done there. But uh, it was 71 villages. So now that the LRA was moving out, the, the displaced peoples could go back to their villages. But there was nothing there. There's no infrastructure, no right. homes. And particularly the young girls. You can't, uh, they were in these camps sometimes for 20 years. And they had water and they had sanitation, and you just can't uproot someone like that and put them back out in the bush. Right. So we put in uh, 71 wells, we put in the latrines, we teach the community on sanitation and hygiene. Uh, so they're very comprehensive projects. And, and the real key thing to me, Wade, is that Rotarians on their own, we all want to do these projects, but to have the staff of World Vision right there in this community, this was Gulu, Uganda, and that was kind of the heart of all the efforts uh, dealing with the uh, displaced peoples there. Matter of fact, the president of the Rotary Club, when I sat down with him, his name is uh, Gerald Obai. And Gerald, uh, my first meeting with him, I said, tell me what you know about World Vision here. And he looked at me and he's a PhD, he's a doctor. And he says, they drive dirty vehicles. <laughs> and I, and Rotarians have a sense of humor globally, which is really the fun part of my job. And I said, Gerald, what do you mean? And he said there was 72 NGOs in Gulu at that time because of all the displaced peoples and the refugee camps. And he said, Kim, World Vision, you see their vehicles, they're in the field, they're working, you can see what they've done, what they're going to do. They can tell you uh, what they're doing but you see it and their vehicles are dirty where most of the NGOs drive to each other's offices for lunch. <laughs> that is true, good point. Uh, actually, when I was in Honduras working with uh, Project for World Vision, uh, I, I got to see how the vehicles are used more like a, a wagon than a, a truck or car. Right. <laughs> they, they do uh, a lot of work. Um, tell me some of the other areas you work in, uh, you have worked in. With Rotary. With, with Rotary and uh, with the projects, some of the World Vision yeah, projects. There, we've got some very interesting ones. We have two in Honduras right now. Uh, and usually when we do these projects, there are areas that the government doesn't even get to. I just met with the past vice president of Honduras two weeks ago, and he said, we're, and he's in Rotary. He said, where you are doing your project, the government doesn't even go. And the communities will tell you, uh, one of the one of the a matter of fact, the vice president told me he was promising water to a community, and a man in the audience raised his hand and and said, "Excuse me, but if everyone who was promised to bring us water were to bring it, we would have a flood, <laughs> and we would need flood assistance." Uh, people make promises, then they don't follow through. Yeah. We went out with Rotary, and we followed through. Uh, here in California, we did a, uh, a million-dollar project in Angola. It used to be the breadbasket of Africa, the Fresno area clubs wanted to make an impact in the world where the, the biggest impact they could make with food. And so we put a project together for them in uh, Angola. The Rotary Foundation was very interested. There was only one Rotary Club left in Angola. And as a result of the project, we actually were able to spin off another Rotary Club. I think now there might be three. But uh, we did a million dollar project. It was 70 small farm co-ops. So there, there was really thousands of uh, people involved. We brought in the potato seeds. We brought in the fertilizer, which is, they claim, more valuable than gold there. It gets stolen. It had to be under armed guard <laughs> at all times. But we taught them we ir uh, the irrigation, uh, how to successfully raise a new type of potato and fertilizer, the care, but more importantly, Wade, we opened up the market in the capital of the country and provided the transportation. So not only now did they have a good crop, 
to help them and their families, but they also had cash now coming into these very poor communities that had been devastated by the Civil War there. So you actually created a market then for the yes. product itself. Yes. Oh, that's outstanding. Very good. And I noticed uh, World Vision is pretty keen on education, educating those people that you help in those projects. Tell us a little bit about what you did in Angola with, with that project. Did you have classes, class sessions, uh, training you're, and teaching? Yeah, you're hitting on some of the areas that the clubs themselves, if a Rotary Club tried to do this simply on their own would be so difficult because even in the project you were in in Honduras, there's thousands of hours of training with the community on the management of the asset. If it's a water project, not just the, the water source, but keeping it clean, working on the pumps, uh, maintenance and repair, having parts there and collecting a little bit of money from everyone using the water so they actually have the funding to buy the parts they need. Uh, and then the women loan uh, little bits of money out, kind of a micro, micro lending, if, you, if, you, if I can use that term, uh, to other women to help them start businesses. But the World Vision staff, they have expertise and they stay in these areas for uh, 15 years on the average. So we can go in and do a rotary project, complete it and leave but their staff are still there doing the other sectors that have to be addressed to lift these communities out of poverty. And they lift themselves. These aren't handouts. When we're doing this work, the community is totally involved in every aspect of it. But you mentioned the training and to have the professional staff that can spend the hours and the days needed to really work in these large communities to train them. So when we're done with that project, it's sustainable. Great, great. So that is uh, one of the key elements of all projects, the sustainability component. It sounds like you touched on ownership also of uh, the people that are being involved, being engaged. Tell me how um, Rotary ends up getting that involvement and creates some of the ownership because it sounds like it's pretty much focusing with World Vision is doing the, the lead role. You, you ask good questions. <laughs> uh, these projects have to have total involvement of the Rotary Club. And that has always been a concern, and that's actually the main part of what I do. Uh, World Vision gets billions of dollars a year. They're almost $3 billion annually. Mm. Uh, very low overheads, but they're used to getting money doing a project, sending a report, and they're done. Mm -hmm. Our projects have to have total involvement of the local club. So it's new to the staff of World Vision, and it's new to the Rotary Club. They're used to doing a project, heading it up, handling all the funds, doing everything themselves. And so uh, we work very closely with the club. And when I visit, we, we just finished a, a $1.1 million WASH project in northern Uganda, another one. By the way, you want to tell the audience what WASH stands for? I'm sorry. <laughs> Wa water and sanitation and hygiene very good. Thank is you. WASH. <laughs> so every time you provide water, you do that. But you also, we do 100% sanitation coverage. So it's uh, called community-led total sanitation. The communities agree to totally stop outdoor defecation. Not a, a fun topic to talk about on TV, but it's been going on for thousands of years. And so, uh, and then the sanitation training, the hygiene training within the community. Right. right. But uh, on these water projects, I sit down with the Rotary Club and I'll say, tell me your involvement. What did you do? How did you choose the contractors to do this job? And they'll just immediately come back and say, well, we went with the World Vision staff down to the national office, which is a seven hour drive. We agreed with the procurement department on how we'd write the RFP, the request for proposal. They got the bids in, they shared all the bids with us. We said, here's four contractors we would like you to use. All four of those were okay with the World Vision staff. That's the contractors they chose. So we have a global memorandum of understanding that the Rotary Foundation provides for all of these collaborative projects with World Vision. And in that, it very specifically outlines the responsibilities of the club in the US, the club in the project country, World Vision US, World Vision in the project country. So we go through those line by line on every one of these projects. That's very good. Now, World Vision is one of the few uh, NGOs, non-governmental organizations that actually has that agreement with uh, the foundation. Uh, yeah, I'm not aware of anyone else that does. It was <laughs> not easy to put together. There, there are a few, but there's not a lot, yeah. definitely so. Good. Uh, what do you think the advantages are of the two organizations working together in these, in these areas? And when I say that, how much leverage do you get working in that way? 
The, the, well, the leveraging, the big leverage comes in two areas. One, having the professional staff at World Vision that often you wouldn't find in the Rotary Club. But many of the projects we do, there are civil engineers, there are very knowledgeable people in these clubs. Uh, but having the staff, the staff at World Vision with uh, agriculture expertise, with sanitation, civil engineering, hydrology, uh, to supplement the Rotary Club. And the other is the financing. And I'm often asked, Wade, why does World Vision match the funding from Rotary? And uh, it's actually quite a simple answer. I put this together with our CFO many years ago. Uh, World Vision does maybe 200 million or more a year with USAID, our own government, mm -hmm. doing projects. Well, the overheads they pay are in the neighborhood just north of 20%. It takes a lot of money to put a real professional project together. The overheads we get from Rotary are exceptionally small and do not cover the overheads. So we have to bring in another donor who understands that a larger portion of their funding is going to overheads. Hmm. Now, that so is le interesting. Leveraging the financing, leveraging the feet in the ground, and just really together we're putting out a better project. We call it one plus one equals eight. <laughs> we, the, your club funding gets multiplied by matches from the Rotary Foundation from your district, the match for the district, and then uh, World Vision takes the total Rotary funds and they match it uh, at least at 100%, sometimes even more. Right, right. Oh, that's outstanding. Now, not catching a quick, trick question here, but um, due to conflict of interest, oftentimes Rotarians aren't allowed to work in both the NGO as a paid staff person and also in these projects specific. But it sounds to me like you have probably quite a few Rotarians actually working with or within uh, World Vision. Have, have you seen that? No, it, no. We, Honduras would be a good example. We have a WASH person in Western Honduras and when uh, Rotary in the U.S. wanted to work in Western Honduras, he was an asset in the fact that he knew where the needs were the greatest, but he was also a good Rotarian, and he said, I don't want to have anything to do with this, and it, and it should not be my club. And so we chose a completely neutral club that absolutely wanted to do the project, and that's a model project that mm -hmm. we're doing in Honduras. Got it, got it. Now, when we look at... Um, two organizations working together. Have you seen any difficulties with, say, one organization promoting the other? For example, people wouldn't probably join World Vision, but they could potentially join or start a Rotary Club. Have you seen any of that occur? We encourage our staff to join Rotary. Our okay. staff uh, enjoy the Rotarians. Uh, again, I mentioned to you, I'm always checking with the club and with our staff to make sure that we're truly involving Rotary and that the Rotarians are are really involved doing their job. And uh, I was sitting, this happened to be Northern Uganda again, and I had the World Vision local people and the Rotarians in the same room. And, and so the, I asked the Rotarians, I said, how do you like this? He said, we, have, we are one. He said, we have had so much fun. He said, but we would go to these communities to inspect the project and we were always in World Vision vehicles. And so all the community would see is the World Vision emblem. So they made up a Rotary wheel on a big magnet, you know, the one that will attach to the side of the vehicle. So now when they go out, it's rotary and world vision. And I've got pictures of these. Oh, okay. But uh, when I asked our staff, it, our staff don't get the opportunity to connect with the local business people that they get to meet when they work with the Rotary Club. Very true. So senior staff in the country at one point would say, well, our staff are too busy. They can't meet with Rotary every month and go take <laughs> visits to the project and they have too much to do. And in every one of our staff I've ever asked that question, they say, oh no, we absolutely enjoy going to the Rotary meeting and then going with them on the inspection. So there, there's been bumps in the road. I, Wade, when we start these projects, the very first meeting we ever have, I say, how many people here have been married or are married or have a girlfriend? And most, that covers most people. And then I'll ask, have you ever had a disagreement? <laughs> with your spouse. And so uh, we, we up front make sure they realize. And then World Vision is a faith-based organization. Hmm. And often uh, a Rotarian might ask, how can that be? How can a secular organization work with faith-based? It has never been an issue. Uh, the laws prohibit faith-based organizations from proselytizing. 
World Vision subscribes to the Red Cross and the Red Crescent Society uh, Code of Ethics and Operating Procedures. And uh, I know we had a meeting around a conference room at the Rotary Foundation with John Huco, the General Secretary, and they didn't want that on the agenda. They said there's not necessary, mm -hmm. but they brought it up, uh, asked if anyone had an issue with religion, and no one has ever to my knowledge, in any of our projects, ever has that ever been yeah, a problem. It's a good idea they brought that up, uh, just to keep that transparency out there, because that yeah. would have come up at one point in time, and it would have looked like a cover-up otherwise. Yeah, <laughs> no, they're, they're faith-based. I mean, their World Vision's the largest humanitarian aid in Mauritania, as an example. Mm -hmm. It's an Islamic state. I think it's capital punishment to convert to Christianity. They're not doing work there trying to convert people, <laughs> and, and uh, they would be in big trouble if yeah. they tried. Sure. Well, that sounds good. I noticed uh, in Honduras while I was there visiting one of the sites that your staff, the staff of World Vision, had shirts that had World Vision on one pocket and they had a rotary uh, wheel on the other pocket. So was that part of the plan for a lot of these joint ventured uh, projects? You want me to get you one of those? I, was, I brought that up because <laughs> they, didn't, they didn't give me one, by the way. <laughs> It'd be well, great. It, it took me a long time to get one of those shirts. I bet but it did. <laughs> the staff, uh, I think it started in Uganda years ago, and I went to visit one of the projects, and the whole team, the Rotarians and the World Vision staff, had those shirts on. And <laughs> I thought it was great. So uh, I, we try to do that in every project now. That sounds good. We've got one picture that you, you sent in. This picture here shows... Uh, you working with some locals. I believe this is actually a Honduran project, correct? It is. Uh, this, uh, this is a phenomenal project. To give you an example, uh, right where I'm standing here, you can see behind us a 25,000 gallon water tank. You can see the rotary wheel and the World Vision emblem. Uh, the person pinning the something on my chest, that's the mayor, his name's Walter. Uh, he, he's just a phenomenal guy, but on just this portion of the project, there's 270 men in that community. And this is not a well, this is a spring enhancement. Okay. The spring is what supplies the water to the tank. The tank then has distribution lines going to all the homes in the community. So they all now have taps at their home. But 270 men in that community donate one day every nine days to digging the ditches required wow. in this case for 15 kilometers of buried pipe wow. and uh, so every nine days they have 30 men digging ditches uh, so that's one of the community involvement that the world vision staff were able to put together and um on this project specific then where's the location of it in honduras is it right near the border of uh, el salvador Oh, you know, I'll it's outside. Yeah. It's uh, I mentioned to you, I, I met with the vice president of the country. He said the government doesn't even get out there. The Rotary Club that we're working with here, the local Rotary Club, is uh, Santa Rosa de Copan. So it's two hours away from here. And they were not aware how bad these communities mm -hmm. were. Uh, there's, there's people here that haven't had a freshwater source in over 30 years. They might have had a well that dried up. This particular village, weighed the, uh, we completed this village last year. Prior to the project, it was over close to 600 cases of diarrhea with the children. Sure. It was less than 60 last year. We just finished it last year. I think the, this year they'll be quite a bit lower than that. Okay, good, good. Now, the, you said it's coming from a spring, an artesian someplace up in the mountains. Is that actually piped in then? You created a dam and did all of the above to... Yep. Try and get the water to fill this up. They're pretty impressive. If you see how they cap the springs and all the apparatus they have for cleaning and getting the silt and sand out and the traps they have in the pipe so that they can always keep it clean, that's what the community members agree before we ever start to take on. Uh, so they have to maintain the whole system when it's done. They take great pride. They built the system. They were involved with every part of it. Right. Uh, there's also some chlorine treatment and things, and every community member here pays the equivalent of about a dollar and fifty cents a month to have the water and then that's the money they used for the parts of the chlorine the things they need to keep it up and then these actually come into um, supply lines to the house specific yes. so they're f servicing and feeding the, the houses now i'm not a hydrologist and i can't tell you why these springs always seem to be so high up in the mountains but obviously <laughs> the spring is higher than the tank 
The yeah, tank right. is up pretty high above the communities, right. and then that's what provides the pressure to get the water to the homes. Gotcha. Oh, that's that's great. Outstanding. Uh, we took a look at one of the other projects, uh, or I did, um, on the other side, San Pedro Sula. It was well done. Uh, yeah. And this one also was serviced by a, an artesian. Uh, they did still have to monitor and maintain it, but they didn't have the filtration systems you have along the yeah. rest of the way. That makes a big difference. Now, as far as maintenance of the upper lines, the filters, things like that, is that the responsibility of a committee, or is it each individual gets trained on that? No, I think that's a good question. Uh, you, you've looked at these before. I'm not used to talking to people who have experience in these <laughs> projects. So every one of these projects has a president of the water board. Usually they're run by women, uh, these in Honduras, uh, probably half and half, but you have a president, a secretary, a treasurer, you have a whole committee. So when we take the Rotarians to see the project, uh, normally you'll have all eight or nine of the committee members there. And okay. then we'll have the community members tell us, you know, what changed in their lives because of this. And, uh, but yes, you have a whole committee, they elect themselves, they take great pride in the management of the system. and. At any given time, they can tell you how much money they have, how many people are using the water, exactly what they've been doing. Uh, and that's what, again, I mentioned before, these aren't handouts. These are hand up to get them out of poverty. Once you've got the water and we're done as Rotarians and we leave, you've still got the World Vision staff there working on economic development, bringing in new types of right. crops. Uh, building schools at any given day there's probably 3,000 schools that World Vision is either building or involved with at some part of, in the world fixing su supporting uh, once you have the water the girls can go to school that's a key thing to change these communities that is that, that is the biggest one and um, one, one quick uh, question then included in all of these is sanitation the sanitation element to that yes Every okay. one of the projects, 100% uh, of the communities have to have, be trained in sanitation, understand the consequences of poor practices. And then I mentioned in Africa, particularly with the outdoor defecation, it's totally eliminated. Good. I could go into great depths and spend a half an hour <laughs> telling you how they train them, but. Good. Uh, very good. Yeah. Well, uh, Kim, thank you very much for coming, in, coming down. I know it was quite a trip for you to make it down for a show, but. We sure appreciate all the information you gave to us. Uh, that was outstanding and great job too, all the things that you do around the world and helping out both through Rotary and through World Vision. It's gonna be a great partnership. With that everybody, thank you very much for joining us. Um, take a look at what World Vision does and, and Rotary itself. It's two, or, two organizations that create the synergy that together will be changing the world. And that is one thing that Rotary looks forward to is finding these partners because it's not gonna happen with Rotary alone. With that, thank you very much, and we will see you next time.